navigating public transportation, especially during the bustling morning rush hour, proved to be quite a challenge, particularly for a 12-year-old named Bobby. He was well acquainted with this daily expedition, commuting to school from his new neighborhood, where he and his father had recently settled. Bobby's routine involved him occupying a seat by the window, engrossed in his music and smartphone, paying little attention to the fellow traveler's collective anxiety. The bus was typically packed with workers and students, hurrying to their respective destinations. However, on this particular day, the usual crowd was joined by an inspector, donning an official uniform and a distinctive badge on her jacket. With a confident and resonant voice, Pamela Brown, the seasoned inspector from the city transport office, announced. Attention passengers, please display your tickets. Her authoritative tone reverberated through the bus. And the passengers promptly retrieved their crumpled tickets. From various pockets and purses. Bobby, having diligently paid his fare, remained largely unaffected by the inspector's stern demeanor. Mrs. Brown seemed indifferent to the schoolboy, his backpack snugly secured. Instead, she directed her attention to a young woman adorned in unpretentious attire. Upon the inspector's request, the young woman offered a bashful smile and shook her head, implying the absence of a ticket. Indignant at the woman's response, Mrs. Brown's voice grew sharper as she addressed the entire bus. What do you mean you don't have a ticket? Then you must pay the fine. When you go to the theater, do you forget your tickets too? There's no credit here, we don't provide loans. The woman attempted to explain her predicament. Her voice barely audible due to her embarrassment. Tearfully, she confessed. I don't have money on me. If I did, I would have gladly paid the fare. I left my wallet at home, I rarely use public transportation. Dismissively. Mrs. Brown labeled her as a swindler and declared that if she had no money, she should have stayed home. She persisted in threatening her with police intervention, vowing not to allow her off the bus until law enforcement arrived. Intrigued by the unfolding situation, Bobby removed his headphones and regarded the distressed woman with empathy. Driven by a sense of compassion, he approached Mrs. Brown and handed her some crumpled bills, quietly saying, Here, take this. It should cover the fine. The inspector responded with scorn, berating Bobby for his naivety, and reminding him that it wasn't his responsibility to rescue swindlers. Unfazed by her derisive comments, Bobby stood his ground, unwavering in his resolve. After a brief hesitation, Mrs. Brown accepted the money, though she couldn't resist making a mocking remark about the boy's idealism. Bobby brushed off her taunts, adjusting his backpack straps with composure. He readied himself to disembark at his designated stop. To his surprise, the young woman chose to follow him. Expressing her gratitude, she remarked. Thank you. Your kindness means a lot. Can you believe my car broke down? And my credit card was in the glove compartment. I promise to repay you. She touched Bobby's shoulder appreciatively. Bobby reassured her, don't worry about it. You don't need to repay me. Really. With a parting farewell, he hastened toward the school building. Naturally, Monica Russell, the young woman, held a different perspective. Yet, the schoolboy, unaware of her identity, remained oblivious to the fact that her name was Monica Russell, and that she was, in fact, a prosperous businesswoman. Impressed by Bobby's compassionate act, Miss Russell was determined to reciprocate his kindness. To execute her plan, Monica discreetly gathered information about Bobby from his school, providing a detailed description of his appearance and approximate age. With this information, she discovered his name and learned of his passion for basketball and aspirations of becoming a professional athlete. However, a formidable obstacle stood in his path. 
an inadequately maintained gym at his school, furnished with outdated sports equipment that should have been replaced long ago. Undeterred by this hurdle, Monica decided to turn Bobby's dream into reality. Unbeknownst to Bobby, Miss Russell was a thriving businesswoman with substantial assets. Across the country, her modest attire and unassuming behavior were a reflection of her preference. Not to draw attention to her financial prosperity, she vividly remembered her early business days when every penny counted. And this sensibility guided her unpretentious lifestyle. While Monica's career soared, her personal life was less fortunate. Marred by opportunistic suitors who sought her for her wealth. With the determination to fulfill Bobby's athletic dream, Monica navigated the bureaucratic procedures with the school's administration and allocated a substantial amount for the gym's renovation. However, Monica's generosity didn't end there. She aimed to make Bobby feel her goodwill personally. Thus, she procured an entire set of basketball uniforms for him, accompanied by an envelope containing money, a sum even larger than what Bobby had used to pay her bus fine. Presenting the gift to Bobby as he was leaving school, Monica's gesture left him astonished. Blushing, he stammered. What is this? It must have been very expensive. Why so much? Bobby, unaware of Monica's financial standing, assumed that such a lavish purchase would burden her finances. But Monica brushed aside his concerns, insisting that he accept the gift. When Bobby proudly showed his new uniform to his father, George Martinez, he was met with surprise. Doubts about the authenticity of Bobby's story clouded Mr. Martinez's mind. However, as the boy recounted the tale of paying a stranger's fine with all his pocket money, the truth shone through. Bobby's tale reaffirmed George's belief in his son's kindness and empathy. The single father, George Martinez, truly comprehended the depth of Mrs. Russell's genuine intentions. A few months later, during his son's basketball game at the school. The game coincided with the grand reopening of the school gym, which had recently undergone renovation. The display of such generosity from patron Monica Russell pleasantly surprised many parents attending the game. Initially, Bobby didn't even recognize the woman he had encountered. During the morning rush hour, the same Mrs. Russell who had made such an impact on his life Expressing his gratitude, he humbly conveyed. Thank you very much, Miss Russell. My friends and I are incredibly thankful that we can now play basketball. Whenever we want. Miss Russell warmly responded. I should be the one grateful, Bobby. You restored my faith in kindness and sincerity. In a challenging moment. You chose to help when others turned a blind eye to the situation on the bus. Monica embraced the boy, and their connection deepened. Approaching the scene, George greeted Monica. Sharing his pleasure at meeting her. He mentioned how Bobby had talked about her. But they were unaware of her full name. Monica returned his smile, her gaze meeting George's. Through conversations, they learned about each other's lives. Monica discovered that Bobby's mother had tragically passed away during childbirth and George had been raising the boy on his own. The camaraderie flowed naturally, and instead of parting ways, they found themselves heading to a nearby coffee shop. Their connection grew stronger, a subtle attraction weaving between them. As the evening set in, George and Bobby returned home. Their spirits lifted by the delightful time spent with Monica Russell. This initial meeting marked the inception of an undeniable attraction between George and Monica, which steadily pulled them closer. Their fondness evolved into a deep connection. Much to Bobby's joy, he witnessed their relationship flourish, eventually culminating in them becoming a couple. Of course, the boy couldn't have foreseen that his compassionate act of paying for a fellow passenger's ticket would lead to the gift of a loving and caring mother. George's proposal to Monica was met with an enthusiastic yes. And young Bobby was ecstatic, 
knowing that his cherished figures, George and Monica, would soon be united in marriage. The Martinez family's joy multiplied after the wedding. As they welcomed new moments of happiness. Among these events was the birth of their son. David. Bobby's sporting talents thrived. And he pursued his dream of becoming a professional basketball player. The Martinez family, now complete. Embraced a future brimming with hope and shared accomplishments. Mrs. Wilson, a foreigner, had never experienced air travel before. Arriving at the airport, she found herself bewildered. Unsure of where to proceed. Surveying her surroundings. The elderly woman decided to trail a cluster of passengers. Rushing toward their boarding gate. Assuming they were familiar with the process. She chose to follow their lead. For someone who had grown up in a provincial town. The airport's check-in procedure seemed astonishing, almost mythical. As was her habit, she concealed her home key within her shoe. A precaution against misplacing it. However, she was unaware that the metal detectors at the door frame would react to it. Despite dressing in her finest attire for the journey, Mrs. Wilson's appearance led fellow passengers to avoid her, mistakenly pegging her as impoverished. This misunderstanding was evident when the check-in staff, taken aback, observed her brandishing a business class ticket. In the meantime, Mrs. Wilson nearly missed her flight. Due to her inadvertent pursuit of passengers bound for the opposite end of the country. Thankfully, a kind airport employee intervened, guiding her to the correct departure zone. Some fellow passengers had already congregated there awaiting boarding. This considerate individual ensured she reached the gate specified on her boarding pass, cautioning her against getting lost once more. Throughout this ordeal, Mrs. Wilson's nervousness manifested in her fidgeting with her purse, occasionally stealing glances at her watch. A pleasant young man, also holding a business class ticket, engaged her in conversation. Is this your first time flying? He inquired. Trembling with excitement, she confirmed. Yes, I'm quite apprehensive. The boarding announcement marked the commencement of the process. A courteous flight attendant directed the passengers toward the boarding bridge. Linking the terminal with the aircraft. After collecting Mrs. Wilson's boarding pass. The flight attendant guided her to her designated seat. As fate would have it, Mrs. Wilson's seat was adjacent to the well-dressed gentleman who, upon noticing her, displayed a dissatisfied expression. Setting aside his magazine, he voiced his displeasure. Is this business class? Why should I pay extra only to be seated next to this elderly beggar? Mr. Thompson, please remain composed. The flight attendant intervened, striving to maintain her composure. Mrs. Wilson possesses the same type of ticket as you do. It's evident on her boarding pass. She gestured for him to inspect the evidence. I don't wish to look at anything. I understand, I ought to have purchased an economy class ticket. The man grumbled, his tone still agitated. He reluctantly shifted his magazine, freeing Mrs. Wilson's seat. Throughout this time, the unfortunate elderly lady observed the unfolding dispute with growing anxiety. Maintaining her silence. The other passengers inadvertently took sides. Some showing empathy toward Mrs. Wilson. While others openly opposed her presence in the business class cabin. Among the champions of the bewildered woman was the young man. She had conversed with earlier while awaiting the flight. Refusing to tolerate the man's disgraceful behavior. He opted to defend the elderly lady. For goodness sake, Mr. Thompson. Mrs. Wilson is much older than you. Your conduct is utterly uncalled for. Forcing her to stand while you luxuriate in your seat. In response to these words. Mr. Thompson exhibited visible embarrassment. Leading to a slight tempering of his demeanor. However. The storm of collective indignation within the business class remained unstoppable. 
confounded by how to regain control of the situation. The flight attendant turned a pleading gaze toward Mrs. Wilson. With a realization that she had unwittingly become the epicenter of this controversy. Mrs. Wilson sighed despondently and proposed a resolution. Well, let's not argue. I'll switch to economy class, and that will be the end of it. Her eyes brimmed with tears as she spoke. Conveying a sense that her life had momentarily lost its purpose. Sensing the weight of several disapproving gazes upon him. Mr. Thompson chose to relent. Removing his magazine from the seat beside Mrs. Wilson. Take your seat, Mrs. Wilson. It's rightfully yours, and you've paid for it in full. With a mix of caution and relief. The elderly lady cautiously settled into her seat. Yet, she remained unaware that an old photograph with worn edges. Had slipped from her handbag as she sat down. Mr. Thompson noticed the photo and. Picking it up realized it depicted a young boy. Curious about its significance. Mr. Thompson inquired, offering the photo to his elderly seatmate. Touched. Mrs. Wilson accepted the photograph as if it were the most precious treasure. A smile illuminated her face, seemingly erasing all her wrinkles. Yes, this is my son. He's a pilot, actually flying the plane we're on right now. She answered with pride, dabbing her eyes with a handkerchief. In response to this revelation, the business class passengers settled into a hushed attention. Prepared to listen to her story, Dorothy Wilson recounted her upbringing in a modest family of four siblings. Her parents, Kate and John Wilson, maintained a small farm that staved off hunger during difficult times. As the eldest, Dorothy shouldered some of the responsibility for her siblings. Her youngest brother, Peter, required special care due to his mental challenges. With the outbreak of World War II, Dorothy's father, John Wilson, volunteered for the army, serving against the Japanese military in the Pacific Islands. Before departing, he entrusted his daughter with a cherished family heirloom, a golden keepsake passed down from his grandfather. He implored Dorothy to safeguard it until his return. Regrettably, John Wilson returned in a casket draped in the national flag, leaving the Wilson family reeling from the loss of their breadwinner and patriarch. Following her father's passing, Dorothy's mother withdrew from the world, eschewing romantic entanglements. Time passed, and Dorothy, now growing older, contemplated forming her own family. Yet, her responsibilities included caring for her mentally challenged brother, Peter. Her two other siblings had long since relocated to a larger city. Leaving Dorothy, her brother, and aging mother to navigate life's challenges. As years unfolded, Dorothy's path intersected with true love. At 28, when hopes of marriage had nearly waned. She encountered Jack, a handsome shepherd tending flocks across pastures. Their connection blossomed swiftly, evoking a fairy tale quality. Plans for their wedding took shape. Yet, the cloud of misfortune that seemed to perpetually hang over the Wilson family struck again, shattering Dorothy's newfound happiness. One fateful evening, Dorothy's mentally challenged brother, Peter, accidentally set their dwelling ablaze. Jack valiantly attempted to rescue him. But tragically, both perished in the inferno. Bereft of her home, Dorothy and her mother found refuge in a modest shack purchased with funds from selling Jack's sheep. It was then that Dorothy discovered she was pregnant. Sadly, her mother's dementia had progressed, manifesting as aggressive behavior. The strain was such that Kate, her mother, frequently turned violent, even attacking her pregnant daughter with a knife attributing their woes to Dorothy's existence. In the midst of these hardships, Dorothy gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. Yet, the constant dread of her mother inadvertently harming the child plagued her. For three long years, Dorothy lived in a perpetual state of fear for her son's safety. Ultimately, worn down by ceaseless grief and misfortune, 
Dorothy made the heart-wrenching decision to place young Kevin in an orphanage. With tearful resolve, Dorothy believed that the orphanage could offer Kevin a safer environment. Then under the same roof as his grandmother, who posed a potential threat. Years passed, and Dorothy remained with her mother until her eventual passing. At that point, Dorothy sought to retrieve her son from the orphanage, only to discover he had been adopted. Determinately, Dorothy embarked on a relentless search for her son, a quest spanning numerous years. Recently, a breakthrough emerged. Facilitated by a volunteer organization specializing in reuniting missing relatives. Securing a business class ticket to be closer to her son. Who was piloting the plane. Dorothy's reunion with Kevin materialized on her 85th birthday. With a sense of tranquility, she uttered. Now I can die in peace. Heaven's uncertainty aside. The happiness of knowing my son Kevin is thriving fills me. The old woman's voice quivered as she softly wept. Mrs. Wilson's narrative stirred deep emotions among the passengers. Leaving no one untouched. It even prompted some to profoundly reconsider their perspectives on life. Unbeknownst to her. Her story prompted the flight attendant to step into the cockpit. And convey something to the pilot. Within a few minutes, a new announcement resonated over the intercom. The captain's voice rang out, addressing the passengers. Dear passengers, this is your captain speaking. While our flight is nearing its conclusion. Our lives need not conclude with it. Every life is a tapestry of highs and lows. Yet this shouldn't lead us to believe that some are inherently luckier than others. The captain continued. Emphasizing that opportunities are woven into our lives from birth. With our personal trajectories determined by how we navigate them. Mistakes, the captain posited. Our pathways to understanding the beauty of forgiveness. As such, assigning blame when there's no true culprit is unnecessary. Holding on to resentment against those. We may not fully comprehend is equally misguided. The captain concluded by expressing his love and forgiveness. For his mother on board, urging respect for her goodness. The captain's words prompted a resounding standing ovation from the passengers. Their hearts lifted by the affirming message. Landing was met with cheers and applause. And as the plane taxied to a stop, Mrs. Wilson embraced her son after many years apart. Amid tears of joy, she presented Kevin with the cherished family heirloom. She had safeguarded for so long, tenderly cradling the emblem of his lineage. Kevin wept with an unrestrained emotion. The weight of years of anticipation culminated in this moment. His lifetime's longing finally realized.